Recently, a survey has been conducted. I hope you remember about cyber security. Yes? How many of you have uh, filled the form? How many of you have filled the form in, the, in your computer class? One hour. Is there anyone who uses more than one hour in this class? Yeah. Two hands. We are actually voluntarily lifting their hands for more than one hour. And two hours. Two hours. Okay. Is there anyone more than two hours? Is there anyone?
So please, already you have little bit knowledge about this. You, uh, you did survey and uh, you listen carefully. And please, uh, I hope you also will leave some impact on others. Thank you. God bless you, Raj. And stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you, Jastik sir. Thank you, Jastik sir. Banner right there. He is studying in Greenville School, Texas. He is from Texas, is it? USA. USA. Okay. He is studying in this class? Class 10. I think some of the class 10 students might be his classmates. So very happy to uh, meet him like this because this is not a program conducted by a class 10 uh, students in the school. He has initiated, he has tied up with uh, one of the organizations called Safe Teams Online. So, you have to give him a big draw of applause for the Why is he asking? Is it a team sponsored by your school? He said, no. Even my teacher doesn't know what I am doing. So what made him to become like this? I asked my wife, she was this uh, English teacher, his last wife. Tell me something about him. She said, she is like, he is like a boon to the earth. And he was calm, patient. He never uh, uh, created any problem to anyone in the school at all. And what about his academics? Even academics were at the piece. So, was he not in the class? Not at all. He was completely calm, down to earth. He used to talk to his words. Then, uh, he should come into the gifted chain category. So, big throw of applause to Raj. I would like to give another question to his mother because of uh, uh, teaching sir, this is uh, the, this is what I personally uh, uh, trust from my bottom of my heart that mother is a first teacher, yes or no? Yes sir. If mother teaches well how to behave in the society, how to make your uh, shape your uh, future, so their uh, our growth will start. So thank you very much madam uh, for trying him like that. Definitely Raj, we are expecting you to be somewhere where you have to come to you with a special permission or, uh, or one month uh, prior invitation or permissions. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being here. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to share things with you. Dear friends, we, we all know that uh, internet is very, very important for present generation. So, IT, ICT actually, Information and Communication Technology is actually very, very crucial for us. It is leading. And learning AI, Artificial Intelligence has become mandatory for software engineers software. But what way we are teaching the kids not to use mobile phones? How far it is relevant to it is the next question. So we have to balance both. That is what I think we are supposed to keep in mind. It is not that you are not, say if someone is telling you not to touch mobile phone at all, I don't believe uh, there is a point in it. Instead, so having a dedicated time, having some rules in, uh, within you like this is what the time I am going to allow for my screen time and all, this is actually self-discipline. So Raj will share some of the things, uh, what he has learned, what out of his experience, definitely may help all of us uh, to be more self-disciplined. Whatever others we teach will be remaining uh, in a heart for 10, 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Once you go out of the class or once you go out of the auditorium, again, so every natural person will come out. But we have to keep things in mind. Decide this is what I am going to do from today. It is not one day process, but it is a lifetime. 
process to learn, practice, do some mistakes, rectify them, and again, so uh, try to make it uh, more meaningful. Have a meaningful life, my dear friends. Learn more, but be responsible. This is what is the message from my Welcome to Raj. Now it's a time to welcome Raj with a beautiful introduction. He is presently uh, working as a cardiologist in USA and he is a grandson of Japrada Madam and Hapa Lady Sir uh, who does multiple businesses across the Telangana, especially auto automobile showrooms. So let me give uh, some more uh, insight into his, uh, into his schooling. Uh, he is currently a rising 10th grader at degree in school in Dallas, Texas. He actually involves in community programs. Uh, he is a first class scout and he is on a mission to become an eagle scout. And coming to his hobbies, uh, he is interested in swimming, playing piano. Apart from that, he is also interested in robotics, debates. Patience, discipline, focus and self-motivation are his strengths. And that is making him reach his goals to a greater height. He is a regional ambassador as led by Sir for Safe Teams, which is a non governmental organization. He wants to spread awareness about cyber security and give information for the teens how to be safe while they are using social media or internet. Uh, he wants to spread the awareness across the country, that is India. So he is visiting so many schools from Telangana and also our neighboring state, Bangalore, and uh, spreading the information whatever he has gathered. So now I invite Mr. Raj to share his opinion. I'd like to thank the Presidency, of course, and all of you for filling out the survey. Shemanta Ma'am, uh, Shravya Ma'am, Pavan Sir, and uh, Ajit Sir. All of them have been very helpful in allowing me to have this opportunity to reach out to all of you about uh, the state teams and such security. So, I guess I already have a little bio set about me, but again, I'm Raj. I go to Greenville School in Dallas, Texas. About three years ago, I used to go to Presidency, and I really enjoyed it here. So I really wanted to come back here and give this talk about uh, cyber security and cyber safety. So thank you for having me. I'm also a member of Safe Teams Online, which you've heard. So they're a global nonprofit with the goal of uh, reaching teams across the world and spread, spreading the cyber safety and cyber awareness uh, to them. And I would, as a part of their organization, I'm here today to give you a little seminar about the results of your survey and a little bit about cybersecurity. So, first, anyone want to take a guess at what cybersecurity is? Oh. Is that more? Uh, I guess cybersecurity is something to be protected from the scams which are uh, getting increased nowadays. Yeah, that's a really good answer. Good job. You can see that almost every one of you have used technology numerous times, right? So because of this, we're becoming more and more dependent on technology and we're having our data and other personal things stored on there. So these are some things that are very crucial that we don't want to be in the hands of malicious intenders. And this is why cybersecurity is really important. And so a few pillars that go along with cybersecurity our data protection, threat prevention, secure access, incident response, and user awareness. So these are five pillars that are generally associated with cybersecurity, and you'll oftentimes see them whenever uh, the topic is brought up. Okay, so these are some of the most common types of cyber crimes. So uh, before we, I talk a little bit about this, does anyone, anybody want to show by a raise of hands how many people have been affected by scams or other cyber crimes? Okay, so I see like one, two, three hands. So that's good. At least the number is really low. So for a lot of people, that's not the case because there's a lot of cybercrime that's happening in today's world. So we can see a few of the most common ones include like online scams uh, through unwanted links. So oftentimes they send you these links to emails or messages and ask you to send them money or something like that. And it will only end up going to that scammer's account without you getting any benefit. Then there's also phishing. So phishing is a special type of scam 
What they will do in phishing is someone will impersonate another agency or another person and then ask you for your money or information. I'll give an example here. A few day, months ago, my father's credit card company or someone acting like him uh, asked him to confirm his password because apparently someone had act, hacked into his account. So he immediately sent them his password, but then once he sent the password, he realized that it was a scam and that it was actually his credit card company. So what he did was he called the credit card company and got it sorted out immediately. But the problem is, in most cases, that's not what happens. Oftentimes, they'll take your uh, password, your money, and will all of these leave you like broken. Then there's also cyberbullying. So I'm sure we all know what bullying in real life is. But cyberbullying is just that, but online. So oftentimes, when we say something online, our actions uh, have a real life consequence. We don't realize this when we type a message or a comment, but someone on the other end of the screen will be taking that in a negative way. Then we also have uh, social media hacking. So social media hacking is when a hacker takes over your social media account and then sends messages to everyone in your contact list asking them for either money or data or something of that sort. I'll give an example here as well. My mom's Instagram account was recently hacked and the hacker sent messages to everyone in her Instagram account saying uh, that she needed money for something. But in reality, she didn't even know this was happening. So luckily for her, one of her friends told her about it and she immediately posted on all of her socials telling people that the, uh, a message saying that she needed money was completely false. Again, while they, uh, she got lucky with this, a lot of times that's not what happens. Then, there's also fake versions of mobile, popular mobile apps. So, how, what are some popular games that you guys like to play? Minecraft, yeah. So a lot of times, what happens on the app store, they put up fake versions of these. So like fake Minecraft, fake Free Fire, fake PUBG, all of that. They put them on the app store and then they try to get you to download that instead of the real version. So when they try to do this, they're only trying to take your information or your money and you'll also just be left broken again. And then there's also delivery scam. So I'm sure everyone here has heard of like Zomato, Swiggy, and Amazon, right? So they, they often give you an option for a cash on delivery payment method. And what the, these drivers will sometimes do is when you uh, click the you know, payment method, they'll send you a message uh, a few days ahead of time saying, how about instead of paying me on uh, your, when I get there, I'll pay me by this link and I, you won't have to worry about it. In, instead of this payment going to your product or whatever it is you ordered, it will always just go to their personal bank accounts or whatever scam fund they have. So that's another popular way of getting scammed. And then finally there's also work scams. So work scams are when the scammers message you saying, if you work for us for this amount of hours, we'll give you this amount of money. But in reality what happens is they often just end up taking your money and overworking you or just asking you for more money in exchange for just no return. And then one thing to keep in mind at the end of the day and for all scams is that the main reason they're scamming you or trying to take advantage of you is to get either your money or your data. Because those two are some of the most valuable things that you guys have online. So that's one thing to always keep in mind. Okay, so now for a short little game. So I'll ask a couple true or false questions and you just have to answer them. So when you delete a photo from social media, is it gone permanently? True or false? <laughs> yeah, good job. So the reason behind this is because let's say even if you delete it, it can always be stored on another company's database. And oftentimes you won't have access to this database and you can delete it. Then there's also the other chance that people you don't know of are taking pictures of this post or something that you put online and you can't always get them to delete it as well. So the, they could also have that picture without you ever knowing. Okay, so here's another one. You can always believe anything that's posted on the internet. True or false? What if it's endorsed by a celebrity or someone famous? Is it still true, uh, true or false? Yeah. That's because even if uh, anyone and everyone can post something on the internet. So even if someone famous endorses it, it doesn't always make it true because they're not always the subject matter experts. So I'll give an example for this one as well. A few years back, a famous uh, basketball player in the US believed that the Earth is flat. 
And then I think we could all agree here that the Earth isn't flat, and it's a globe, right? So he convinced his entire fan base that the Earth was flat, and now, after two years, he realized that the Earth is round. So he had to convince his entire fan base that the Earth isn't flat. And a lot of his fans still don't believe him. So that's, it's a really big issue that happened. Okay, now we can talk a little bit about the survey. So, I think everyone in here has filled out this survey, so thank you all so much for that. And then, we had like 785 responses, so that's a really huge number. And then, so based on the results of that survey, we can see that class uh, 7 members, you guys have the highest online presence. So, I guess this is mainly for you guys. So, and then also from the survey, we can see that the male students had a higher online presence as well compared to female students, but a pretty decently sized margin, so. Okay, and then about on average, 70% of the school spends two hours or online every day after school. So I think at the start of the survey, uh, sorry, at the start of the seminar, we had a question about how many other people are spending, so I think this also reflects that. Okay, and now on, on to some takeaways from the survey. So about 50% of students are knowledgeable about asking permission before posting friends photos online. So that's something that's really good because oftentimes when we share a picture of a friend without their permission, it might have some details that they don't want to be posted online. And when we're taking their permission before sharing, we're acknowledging that we are respectful of their boundaries and other things like that. So it's a really good practice to have to ask your friends before sharing their photos online. And then, uh, about 55 students, 55 uh, percent of students are knowledgeable about uh, not sharing passwords. However, only 20 percent of you guys log out of public computers. So it's a good thing that you guys are not sharing passwords because that is again like private information. I mean, of course you can share it with those you know. Like I would share it with my mom or my grandparents, but uh, sharing it with anyone on the internet is not exactly a great idea. But one thing to keep in mind is to always log out of public computers because you don't want other people accessing your data without you knowing. This is, uh, especially if you're logged into a public computer, they'll be able to easily access it without you ever knowing. And then more than 70% of students are careful about not sharing personal information online. That's a really good number because, again, similar to how it's like not sharing friends information without their permission, you don't want to be putting your information online without, uh, especially like sensitive information, without knowing what you're sharing. But uh, more than 40 students of, uh, percent of students are careful about which friend request to accept. That's a good sized number, but we also want to get that up too, because uh, we don't, unless we know who the friend is, like the friend request is in person, it's not always a great idea to accept them because you never know who's trying to talk with you or who's trying to get in touch with you. So it's always a good idea to verify that, of course. And then also, uh, I think we saw this when I asked a question about who had experienced scams. There are only a few of you. But about 70% of you have not experienced any digital thefts or online. However, almost 30% uh, of you have had your devices infected with a virus. So this is a part I'll have touch on later, but uh, there's steps you can take to go like decreasing this number by such as installing antivirus, uh, scanning the files you're using before you uh, open them up and other things like that. Then, uh, almost 40% of students believe that online information is legitimate if a celebrity endorses it. I think at least in this classroom right now, we saw that that's probably not the case. Most of you realize that uh, even as a celebrity university, it, it doesn't always make it true. But we should always try to verify our sources another time before uh, believing that. So I'll ask one more question here. How many of you guys use your phones or the internet for school purposes, like science projects or things like that? OK, so pretty much all of you. So how many of you guys? Make sure to verify your sources before. That's probably like 50%, 40%. So that's a number we want to get up because verify.gov is a government site and that's trustworthy, or .eu is a school site. Okay, so now more than 60% uh, of your students believe that engaging in chatting on social media or downloading files does not leave a digital footprint. Does anybody want to take a guess what a digital footprint is? Yeah. Okay. You would pretty much like easily. 
So it's a key to your identity in real life. You don't want that to be easily like you don't want that to be negatively viewed at you. So it's a good idea to always make sure and be careful about what you're viewing online and what uh, types of files you're downloading. And then on the other hand, the writing the story on a piece of paper generally doesn't translate into leaving an impact on your digital footprint because when you write something on a piece of paper, it's probably going to stay in the physical world and not enter the digital world. Unless you obviously like make a post of it or something like that. And then we also see that about 60% of the students did not know that leaving a digital footprint can leave their identity in jeopardy. Again, so your digital footprint is akin to, uh, to that of your identity in real life. So, and because it's such like publicly viewed information, it can always be accessed and always be used against you. So you always want to keep in mind what you're saying and what you're viewing at online because it can, again, like, always be used against you. And then the next points are about uh, 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 help that students receive from their parents and teachers. About 50% receive help from their parents and 70% from their teachers. That those are two really good numbers because in today's digital world, we oftentimes the people we can trust the most are our parents and our teachers because they know the most about this subject. And we always want to take their help before deciding to do anything. And then about 70% of students have not heard anyone online. Now that's a really good number because I don't think anyone here wants to hurt anyone in person and that probably doesn't translate over to online as well. So that's a good number which we can bring up I believe, but uh, for right now that's a really good number. Good job. Okay, so now for some best practices that you guys can use. So first, before I uh, talk about these best practices, does anyone have any practices that they, practices that they use online regularly to uh, decrease the risk of getting scammed or hacked? Okay, yeah. Updating security and passwords. Yeah, that's a really good option. Yeah, good job. So, so what, uh, like building off of what you said, using strong passwords and using two-factor authentication, those are two really good ways of uh, decreasing your risk of getting hacked or scammed because it makes it a lot harder for people to view your information when you use things such as two-factor authentication. Uh, for a little explanation what two-factor authentication is, it's basically, in addition to having to put your password in when you log into an account, it will also send a notification to your phone or your email, uh, say, telling you that someone is trying to access your account. This makes it easier uh, for you to know who is trying to gain access or use your uh, personal accounts and other things, such things, because it will always notify you before someone tries to log in. Then there's also keeping your password and login information safe. I think all of you guys already do that, but it's just something to keep in mind for the future. Then there's also being mindful of who you're accepting files from because you never know what type of files could be sent to you. Like for example, someone could be just sending you a zip bomb. And a little bit of what a zip bomb is. So you guys know how there's like megabytes, uh, terabytes, yeah. So. Sometimes what people will do is they'll compress huge amounts of data, like petabytes of data, into a small zip file. And then they'll send it over to you, and then when you open this file, it'll crash your computer. So it's not something you always want to deal with because a crash computer is just terrible for anyone. So always be careful about who you're accepting files from. And then finally, also, uh, just remember to install and use antivirus regularly. I think he said it back there, but you always want to have a software installed on your device to protect against viruses and scan software before you use them. And then some more practices are just don't meet up with people you meet online unless you know them in person and you have like your parents' permission. Because oftentimes when someone says this, like a nice and kind person online, it doesn't always translate over to that in person. So you always want to be careful of who you're meeting up with uh, in the online world versus the real world. And then also know what to share, know what to sh uh, what not to share. I think again, you guys have all shown that you know uh, you have a good idea of what type of information you are you should be sharing and what's not a great idea to share online. And then also, so screen time is another thing. I think all of you guys generally restrict it to like two hours, but anything over that or can uh, lead to like mood swings and emotional changes because 
when we're addicted to our social, like social media and other things online on our phones, it can uh, disrupt our view of the world and also hurt our relationship with our family and uh, our phones. So always try to limit your screen time and spend as much time as you can in the real world and outside of like all like social media and uh, YouTube and other such things. And then also in addition to that, just remember to keep your elders and grandparents in the loop because if you really think about it, the social, like the online world has only been here for about 30 years. Before that, no one really had any experience with Facebook or Instagram or any of those things. So we always want to keep our elders in the loop because they're, in addition to ourselves, they're also the ones who are most likely to get uh, affected by these scams and other uh, like harms online. So just remember to keep them in the loop. And then finally, just remember to keep your social media accounts private and secure because again, there's social media hackers like what happened to my mom and other such things that you don't want to be happening to your social media accounts. So it's just a good idea to keep them, keep your accounts private and secure. Okay, and then, so here's some help and resources. The first number you'll see is uh, 1930. If you want, you can take a note of this because this is a really important number for when you're affected by cybercrime. So, uh, think about how when you uh, when there's a crime, you would call the police at 100 or the ambulance at 108, right? So similar to that, there's 1930, which is for cyber crime. This is a government-funded number, so they'll always give you instructions on what to do and step-by-step uh, like -step help on how to deal with the situation you're in. This is a really good number because unlike the US or other major countries, they don't really advertise it as much. Whereas in India, it's like something that they try to get out there so that people know about it. So it's always a good resource. And then in addition to that, there's also the official cybercrime website of, the, of India, which is cybercrime.gov.in. So those two are some really valuable resources if you ever get affected by scams or uh, cybercrime. And then there's also, if you wanted to spread awareness like me and become an ambassador for SQO, you can always contact my email address right here. Um, so that's always an option if you wanted to get more awareness in Nizambas or other surrounding media. And then I'll also be sending out the presentation so if you ever wanted to reach out to me, then that's all in the option. Okay, so does anyone have any questions or doubts about cybersecurity or cybercrime from the presentation that I can clarify now? It's a good idea to keep contacting them because it's, better, it's a resource that you have and in addition to that, you can also look at the website for cybercrime. Please continue the website and call the number of cybersecurity. Oh, they didn't respond? Yes. Okay. So, um, then in that case, there's, I guess, not much we can do because sometimes um, it, it becomes out of our reach once it exceeds like a certain amount of time. So, I guess it's just an unfortunate circumstance. So, sorry about that. Sometimes it's just unfortunate. Okay. Okay. But I did get that. Later I understood that. Okay, I lost that two thousand. Yeah, it's very good program, Raj. Yeah. It's very useful. Thank you. Delete your account, just take note of your session ID. Just hack your hack up your session ID and through that session ID they can access what are your browsing, your account, they will take, they don't need the password, the, the session yeah. ID is enough. So now how to prevent hackers from getting that session ID? Because this recently happened with me. Okay, so like if possible you could try switching like uh, devices or other things but one thing you could also do is just try, try to install maybe like antivirus or other things like that because I think from what I'm hearing it sounds like a form of ransomware, maybe not ransomware but a form of malware that's just uh, viewing all your data so antivirus would probably be the best bet for you but I'm, uh, it might be something else if I'm not sure. In your session ID, the note in your account that I'm repeating this. So there is no way to stop it. If you have any way to stop it, please let me know. Yeah, I, I will. So a lot of things that the problem is that because the world is continuously developing and becoming more dependent on technology, a lot of these scams and not, as of right now, your antivirus and other things like these that practices are probably your best method. Thank you. Yeah. So there's no real way to completely verify scammers because sometimes what they'll do 
is an auto-generate account and then try to get people to contact them. And then oftentimes when you read their, their username, you'll get an uh, understanding of whether they're an actual human or whether they're just like a robot and try to scam you. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is if you end up adding them as your friend, you, you can always tell by the speech and then always remember to keep your parents in the loop. Because if your parents know about this, they can generally tell you what sounds like a scammer and what doesn't and who's like an actual person. So your two main ways are just uh, keep, uh, letting your parents know about it and also just keeping an eye out for like, any suspicious activity or anything like that. Brother's computer got attacked by a virus. Hmm. He downloaded an antivirus but it didn't work. Okay, so sometimes we have this antivirus, but we also want to be like using our own uh, like I guess uh, mind to scan through what type of files we're downloading. Because sometimes what it'll, it might be like a suspicious file or something like that, that it might bypass the antivirus, but sometimes like our own human uh, I guess intellect or like knowledge will be able to see that it's, not, it's a scam and not exactly like a safe thing to download. So... That's our goal is to... What? Sorry, what's the question? We have new technology and AI, why the scams are going to... Oh, so for that, so we're trying to become like double the rate of, uh, which they're progressing. So if we're faster than uh, how they progress, then we can stop them first before they continue to work. Sorry, could you repeat? If we send only three messages to them, they would be able to hack our account. How can we prevent it? If only, if we only send three. Yes, with my Instagram account. Oh, it is? Yeah, I think that's something similar to what happened to my mom. So, in that case, once it gets hacked, then you just have to keep an eye out for suspicious activity and things like that. Okay. Yes, those are also like common that they can happen. Um, if it was a scam, then I'm not 100% sure of why that might have happened because it could be a form of ransomware where they're trying to uh, like seize your device until you pay them X amount of money. But from what I'm hearing, I don't think that's the case, right? But the only when we open the social media is happening. Okay. Not other apps, only social media. And it's a great pleasure for me and all of us to be here today because Raj was one among you guys a few years ago. And uh, I'm so proud that thanks to presidency, Raj is doing, uh, you know, he's, he's able to be here. And 90% of the credit goes to the mother. We, we owe a lot, our family owes a lot to presidency because it's been a blessing for us. Raj and Neela, both my kids went to presidency a few years ago and they went to school in the US and uh, as soon as they came here, it was a real blessing for us to find presidency on par with the U.S. schools. And, uh, you know, I, the best thing I like about presidency is it's not just focused on academics. I think uh, they focus on overall development of a child. And, and uh, uh, real uh, thank you to Chairperson Shamata Ma'am, Shravya Ma'am and Ajit Sir because they put the whole team here, the teachers, the principals. And I think you guys are very curious. I saw a lot of questions today, so that shows that you're paying attention and you're trying to learn, um, which you know is a great quality among all of you. And um, we have a memento for uh, the school and uh, Shamanta Ma'am to show our appreciation for giving Raj an opportunity to present here and uh, spread awareness about cyber security. And also a big thank you to all the students and the teachers for conducting the survey because we got the maximum uh, responses from presidency among all the schools he's conducted across India. So he's been to uh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, and Telangana, various schools in Hyderabad and Nizamabad also, but you guys really rocked the survey. Thank you. Thank you. Your discipline. With this discipline, he is here today. So I want to see you guys also in the same way. 
Is it going to happen? Yes! Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, he is it with now? I know a lot of I think you didn't pay attention when sir spoke with you. But it, it's okay, it's understandable because a lot of people think he's an IT employee looking at him and his like nice sometimes. So it's not your fault. And um, yeah, I think the, lo the motto for presidency is to ignite curious minds and I think it's living up to that motto when I see all of you it's reflecting in your behavior. Yeah, definitely as uh, Chairman Madam mentioned, at least I got inspired to spread this awareness. Let me know Raj if there is a group called Safe Adult. You know, I have been into tech and you know I am a uh, tech graduate and I use tech in every day in my life. But still I get attacked online. Entire organizing this uh, whole survey and you know presenting the deep data with this is very relevant to uh, students and uh, also interacting and questioning all their answers. Uh, I want to mention uh, Chandra ma'am for being uh, here and supporting Raj. Chandra ma'am for Hello, my name is Raj. I am a 10th class student at Green Hill School in Dallas, Texas. I am a safety team online and organization. I am a survey conducted here. I am doing a survey on cyber security and cyber awareness. I am doing a survey on online usage and cyber awareness. I am doing a survey results here. I am doing a seminar conducted here. I am doing a survey results here. साइबर क्राइम जैसे ही बेस्ट मेथड्स अगेंस्ट साइबर क्राइम अंतर जैसे ही इरोज दानगुरी इंच मार्ट लाड़ने। सो ने एक्चुअली थ्री इयर्स बैक इकर प्रेसिडेंसी स्कूल ने इस चादर ना ना कि स्कूल ना चाला हेल्प जे शिंदी ने इकर उन्ना पड़ो ये स्कूल की मत उठी एकेडमिक्स जा कुंडा मतम ओवरऑल स्टूड Raj is here in Nizambad, he is here in Nizambad. He is here in Nizambad, he is here in the US. He is here in the US. He is here in the Child Security Awareness Program. He is here in India. He is here in the holidays. Then I said, I felt very happy. Because he is here in Nizambad, he is here in the project. He is here in Nizambad. Malai, kuni different states ni gula select chase tu nado. Ni sam bad lo kuni school lo gula chase nado, chase tu nadi program. And i awareness malah, pilal ki cahana, ini kan tu pilal lo ekwa phones use chase taro, internet use chase taro. So dani malah cahana problems, i macam cahana crimes winabar thau nai, cyber crimes. So pilal ki cahana informative a unde i program. Magura cahana nacin, ini kan tu, prati point ini tu, raja cepi nado, adi cahana useful gundi, and awal ni jargi nai kuda, even nak kuda oka call ochin di lani, and even so, itu online lo, tisko ali, inta kai tu bound tu, dan tu, nengu kuda, sare, an alu cincha kunda, I paid money, but I didn't get that, but that was a small amount, but ini cahana mandi ki, ini macam problem face je sunaru, so which is a very good program, and I congratulate raja. And because ikat ni, cahdu bi malla ikat orang buat cepala ni, udeshum tu ni ikat kucina dah itu. It's a very good, it's a very good program. And I thank you.